What's up everybody, JJ here, and recently I've had several requests from people asking if I would share my Cura profiles. And of course, I put them on my GitHub, linked in the description down below, and you can find them there, but of course there's no guarantees those will work perfectly for you. My Anycubic Mega S is heavily modified and running Clipper firmware. But better than just sharing them with you, I'm going to share five tips for setting up your own Cura profile or using someone else's, because there's a lot of settings that, even though I have these profiles set up, I'll change in between for different prints. So this can really help you out when slicing any models for your 3D printer. I'm also going to be going over some differences between Clipper and Marlin because I know a lot of people are using both. They're both great firmwares and there are some slight differences for how I would set things up. So let's go right to the computer and get started. So here we are inside of Cura and first off let's start with whatever printer profile you want to start with. Either the manufacturers or one from me or from someone else. And the first tip I would recommend when using new printer profiles is do your calibration towers. Luckily inside of Cura they're built in under extensions, part for calibration, you can do a temperature tower for whatever material you want. This kind of covers a set range that would usually be useful for that material. And then you can even do the G-code changing inside of Cura, post-processing, modify G-code, modify G-code, temperature fan tower is what you want. And then you can input the values here that'll work for whatever tower you're doing. And then do make sure you come back at the end and turn that off because then your next print you slice will have temperature changes throughout it and you'll definitely notice that. The next tower I would recommend is a retraction tower. Same thing, post-processing, modify G-code, put in a retraction tower. And you can do a tower for speed and distance. I would do both, especially if you're getting issues of stringing. This can really help you out. And there's a lot of minor differences printer to printer of what changes your retraction settings you need. The biggest upgrade I've found that helps most with my retractions was upgrading to a Capricorn Bowden tube from the cheap stock one that comes on the printer. The second tip and thing you should look at when using a new printer profile is the starting G-code. Up here, manage printers, select the ones you want to work on and then machine settings. If you're using Clipper firmware, it's really easy to change these macros inside of the firmware. And so if you have it start and end G code with just these macro calls, and that way you can change that start and end code without having to come back and re-slice a bunch of things. In Marlin, on the other hand, it's way more difficult to change your firmware. So for then, I would just use the default. So here's my current start and end print macros. They're not perfect. I'm not married to them in any way but they are working, so if you're trying to get a working one, here's something maybe you can start from and then go from there. Luckily, it is really easy to come in here and change things and tweak things between prints without having to go back to your slicer and re-slice it every single time you wanna change something. If you're using Marlin, on the other hand, I would recommend changing this G-code to remove the purge line. I prefer you printing a skirt around the print and that kind of acts as a purge line right at the print instead of printing it at the edge of the printer. That's just kind of the way I like printing, but you can use whichever option you like. The third tip and the thing I usually change between most slice things is speed. I'll bump this up for large solid objects anywhere from, this is usually about 100 millimeters per second, 80 millimeters outer wall speeds. But if I'm printing more small delicate pieces or several small pieces, I will lower those speeds down to 80, maybe 75 millimeters per second. If you're using Marlin firmware on the other side, I still would use about 50 millimeters per second, maybe bumping up to 75 millimeters per second for the large functional prints. The other thing to really look at is initial layer speed. This is another one I change between what you're slicing. Again, if you're printing something with a large surface area touching the build plate, I might bump this up to 50. I can really reliably get that. I am printing on a G10 build surface, so that one sticks really well. But if I'm printing several small pieces that have very little surface area touching the build plate, I might bump this down to like 20 or maybe even like 15 to get some really detailed little pieces. When it comes to print acceleration, I did use Input Shaper to find the optimal print acceleration. So this might be a little high, especially if you're not using Clipper, your printer might run into some errors. Tip number four is build plate adhesion, and it's important to know when to use them. Skirt, brim, and raft are different modes, and they have different use cases. I almost always use a skirt of three. That primes the nozzle right before it starts, and if you don't have auto bed leveling, that can help you do some live bed leveling. You watch the skirt go down, and you can adjust the corners as you need to get a good first layer. 
It's pretty useful and is kind of my default. I almost always use skirt. Brim, on the other hand, if you're printing a model that doesn't have much surface area touching the base. A great example was this reindeer print I did for Christmas. It's these tiny feet holding up an entire reindeer, so it really needs more surface area touching the build plate, so I used a brim there to help hold the model down. A raft is more of a rare use case. If I'm printing a bunch of really small detailed objects and I just kind of want it to print, a raft will give you a high probability that it will work. I don't like using rafts because it is just some extra plastic you have to throw away at the end of it, but sometimes for some guaranteed reliability in certain use cases, I will occasionally use it. The fifth tip and thing I always change are walls and top and bottom layers. It really depends on what your use case will be. I usually use either two for more of a decorative print, three is probably my middle range, and then four walls will be for a solid functional print. The walls will give you a lot of strength in a print. Infill is kind of important as well, but walls are really where it counts. Same with top and bottom layers. For a more decorative print, I might do three top and bottom, probably four for my regular, and if I'm doing a really structural print, I might bump those up to five top and bottom layers. And then one little bonus tip, something I do change fairly often, is using special modes inside of Cura. I just love these. Spiralize outer contour or vase mode works great, and I love those for printing vase mode prints. You get large prints very quickly, and I think it's such a cool mode. There's also some cool experimental modes. Fuzzy skin is a great one I love using sometimes, but those are more some rare and special use cases, but I do love that they're easily included inside of Cura. But that about wraps up this video, kind of a basic, simple overview of using Cura and using printer profiles. After you've made changes you like, you can go up here at the top and either create new profiles from those changes or just update the current profile you're using. And as you can see, I have so many different ones. A lot of these are little test ones that I tried out and then didn't like in the end, but it's great that they make it so easy to use and update. But anyway, I hope this has helped you out with slicing things inside of Cura. Let me know if you have any questions about things down in the description down below, or if there's any settings I didn't cover in this video, maybe I'll make a more advanced video in the future covering some of those settings. This is kind of a basic overview, so I hope this has a good way to get you started. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out. But anyway, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.